Aya, hi, hi. So it's me again. And today, my second week of progressing in Reboot Hyperion has been recorded into history. Now, my ultimate goal for this week, in comparison to the first week, was to be realistic. I knew that if I kept setting unrealistic goals for myself and falling short, I'd be fighting a mental battle. So I went back and redid my notes and set goals for myself that I knew I could reach without playing an obscene amount of time that would require me to play the game without getting any sort of sleep. So that was the ultimate goal, is to be realistic about the goals that I'm achieving. And the first goal that seemed to be realistic was getting 2k Legion. 2k Legion wasn't a far off away, and with all of the events resetting on Tuesday, even though I was out of 0 to 100s at the beginning of the week, we managed to pull through and we got 2k Legion by Wednesday, which was honestly earlier than I expected. I did not expect to hit 2k Legion on Wednesday. There were some classes that made the road a little difficult, but most of the classes that I did went relatively smoothly and I got them to 120 in about two hours. Two hours was like the goal for every single class. Some classes took 15 to 20 minutes longer, but there was nothing I could do about it. Shout out to AB because AB was trash getting into 100. Please buff AB. Please make the remaster better in third job. Please. I don't want anybody to suffer through that class. Um, but yeah, so that was that was relatively successful, and I was super happy that we hit 2k Legion by Wednesday. After I hit 2k Legion, my goal was to get to 260 as fast as possible. Also considering that the release of 6th job is going to be on Wednesday this coming week. This is coming out on a Sunday, so there's 3 days from now before 6th job actually releases. Now, I never thought that I'd actually be able to achieve 260 before 6th job actually comes out, but once again, to my surprise, we actually did better than I thought. As of recording this on Wednesday, I am just one level away from level 260. I am level 257 with 5%. That is not including the dailies that are coming up later today, which is awesome. I might grind to 260 today, maybe, potentially, depending on how productive I'm feeling. But yeah, we got through all the pre-quests as well. We did Moonbridge, we did Labyrinth of Suffering, Limina. I even soloed the Black Mage already. Soloing the Black Mage on the second week of Reboot Hyperion is crazy. <laughs> That's a joke. If you couldn't tell, of course it was story mode. Um, but yeah, that that was also going relatively smoothly, which was really nice. So, yeah. So yeah, things were looking even more on the up when I when we were doing our bosses. We were planning to do Hard Lotus before the first reset or weekly boss reset of the server. Sadly, we just managed to fall short of that goal. That's the only thing that didn't turn out so well. So I ended up doing normal Lotus and normal Damien instead. I got two cores from Lotus on that first week from normal and three cores from Damien from normal on that first week, which is actually really good because that means that I could farm out my first few Absolab pieces. And because I got the dojo gloves from the week before, that actually means that I was at four set Absolab without even equipping four pieces of Absolab gear because the dojo gloves are a lucky item, which means that they can be a part of any set that actually has gloves inside of its set, which is really cool. But that wasn't the end for bossing this week. After reset, we actually managed to do everything that we wanted to do. Hard Lotus, we cleared, and I got an armor box, which is really good. We need armor boxes this early into the game. Our Damien, we cleared, and I got an armor box. 
I also won the blink for Hard Damien, so I managed to pick up a few flames, cubes, and MVPs along the way, which is nice. And we did normal Lucid and normal Will. Got two droplets from both. Also very nice. I also got a green box, green ring box, from normal Will. But of course, the green boxes aren't consistent and good at all, so we pulled a critical damage ring one. No roar, no weapon jump, as you would expect. So, everything was within expectations. Once again, keeping myself realistic and in check. So, as you would expect, with all of this loot from bosses and stuff coming in, I pretty much redid my whole inventory and made a lot of improvements to my gear. And because I was making improvements to my gear, I got a lot stronger and I could start farming maps that were also a lot stronger. I was farming in Moonbridge from 248 to 254, which got me to 257, so for three levels, 248, 251, and 254. Um, I will say, I was saved by my chat. Shout out to my chat. If you guys want to watch me live, twitch.tv slash akat3. I was saved by my chat. I was planning to go to Last Horizon 2, but they told me that there was a much better rotation for Marksman in Mysterious Fog 3 in Moonbridge, which was getting me around 16.5 to 17,000 kills an hour, which is very insane this early into the game, especially considering that while yes, I do have abs labs and I'm decently strong, I wouldn't consider myself to be established yet, considering that my legion is still relatively weak and I have no star force above 15 on any of my equips besides the fake the fake abs lab weapon. So we used that map and we started farming familiars. We were going for epic familiars because we want to try to roll large drop. The reason why you want to roll large drop on your familiars is because you probably won't be coming back to the Arcane River. The moment you're in Grandis and the moment six job drops, you're going to be farming there because you want to farm your six job that is infinitely more important. So we were farming fams, we were farming fams, we got some epic familiars. We didn't get the jackpot that we were looking for, but I wasn't a whole lot of familiars in. So once again, keeping expectations realistic, we ended up with what we were expecting. We got normal item drop, which gives me an extra 50%. And I know what you guys are thinking, but normal item drop is 60%. It can be both. The normal item drop familiar line is, is really weird and finicky. There are two lines that for some reason have the exact same writing. And one line can give you 60% drop, and one of them can give you 50. Unluckily, mine was 50, so that was kind of sad. But what's not sad is the fact that I actually managed to roll my Threads of Fate into the right prompt. Takano finally decided that she wanted to go and collect herbs, so... I will be having wealth acquisition potions very, very soon, which is awesome. It is so, so awesome because wealth acquisition potions are going to get me more familiars and more mesos. So as we approach what is going to be six job and the most important time for farming, I might be able to get a large drop familiar with the increased drop rates, which is really good. Also, because I'm in Limina, looting the maps will be a lot easier because Reboot Hyperion has no VAC pets yet. So we want to choose maps that are small but somewhat dense. So I was planning on going to End of the World 1-9, which has the augmented monsters. But sadly, even with my increased legion and link skills, I'm still a little too weak. So I'm probably just going to have to settle on farm farming either End of the World 1-4 or End of the World 2-5. Which is not something that I'm particularly keen on, but 
I will do anything to make sure that we're we're progressing our familiar system. And now that I have Limina, I might even try to go for 10 badges. Because 10 badges will get me an extra familiar slot, which means that in my current setup, I can run an item drop familiar, a missile drop familiar, and a third familiar to actually level up my familiars as I go along so that I don't have to waste either mesos or item drop to actually get that third familiar to level up. And I'll do this every week. I feel like it would be pretty fun to do this every week. Just give you guys a live update on what my gear and my account is looking like overall. Just as like a weekly timestamp. Just to see when I hit specific milestones. Or, you know, just to see how much time it takes for me to progress to different stages of the game. I think it would be awesome to do this. So, this is where we're at right now. Level 257, once again. One level short from that faded level of 260. We are 5%, so still quite a ways to go. 544 bills is going to be quite the task. I'm going to assume this is going to take me roughly 10 to 12 hours to grind out to get to 260. Not too bad, if I were to be honest with you. Considering that dailies are still giving me around 15% a day, which is really nice. My gear, that's not my gear. Those are my pets. Um, I did get auto buff and a whole lot of uh, skills for the Starwing because I was kind of getting frustrated that Starwing was not picking up the things around it, which was very frustrating. So we did that. I'm a filthy whale. We still have the gloves for one more day. I'm going to rerun Dojo. Today, of course, now that I'm as strong as I can potentially be for the week. Um, rings and pendant still the same. My dominator pendant, though, I did recube, and we ended up getting a really good potential in the early game. It has 20 item drop rate and 9 decks, which, if you guys didn't know, is good for both bossing and farming the reason why it's so good to roll potentials like this early game is because min maxing your stat is not something you particularly want to do because it's too expensive and min maxing your item and drop is also hard to do so what you do is you aim for lines of stat and lines of drop to give yourself more damage while also getting more drops from monsters, which means that you can farm the resources that you need while also getting the damage you need to get over that initial early game stuff, right? Like CRA, like Papalatus, like Akechi, so on and so forth. So that's what our Dominator Pendant is looking like. We also have a fourth ring. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this ring. I think I'm going to recube -cube my Kana's Treasure for damage. Because we are getting a 4th event ring that will instantly be legendary and we have 200 event cubes to come with it. You get the 200 event cubes from here and the legendary or the event ring from here and the legendary scroll along with it. Which is really, really good. So... A part of me wants to just turn this into damage gear so I have no complications d discerning between damage gear and drop gear. Um, besides that, the weapon is still the same. Nothing's changed here. The belt is still the same. Hat still the same. Face and eye still the same. The reason why I'm not bringing these to legendary is because I'm patiently waiting on either a black bean mark or Papalatus Mark. And for the Condensed Power Crystal, I'm thinking about going to Meister Accessory Crafting so that I can make a shiny red Meister Archer Symbol. What an absolute mouthful. The reason why I want to do a shiny red Meister Archer Symbol to replace this piece of gear to go to Legendary is because the Meister Red Symbol can actually go to 20 stars, which makes it a lot better for scaling into the later parts of the game. 
So that's why these two pieces are kind of dead right now. And I just feel like considering the pace that we're progressing at, there's no real point for me to really invest in these pieces of equipment. Top and bottom, still the same. Nothing going on here. Boots. We got Absolab boots. We crafted these after we finished normal Lotus for the first week. Absolab cape. I got this as a box drop after we cleared hard Lotus. Still have the gloves. The shoulders. I crafted after I cleared first uh, hard Damien. Or no, normal Damien for the first week. And the secondary, we actually managed to pull a Princess No secondary on our second week, along with a second Kana's treasure, which is super awesome. I can't say how stoked I am about this. My drops from Princess No have been absolutely awesome. And because of that, because I pulled a Princess No secondary on the second week, cube sale was just a few days ago, so I decided to cube it. And... It actually went up pretty fast, and we got one line attack, one line dex, and one line boss, which is two useful lines and dex. And for the amount of sp money that I spent on it, I'll take it. This was roughly around 1.2 to like 1.3 bill. Not the exact number, but it's, it's somewhere there, and it was pretty good. I was happy with this, especially considering that I needed attack and boss, because my IED is already good enough. When I boss, it goes up to like 93, which is starting to hit diminishing returns, especially considering that this gives me another 50 IED and snipe comes with 40. So, yeah. We're still using Guardian of the Five Elements, which you get from the Pino prequest. Of course, going to use this for as long as I can. Might as well use the temp stats. Crystal Ventus badge, nothing new here. And my emblem is now two line attack one line dex this was a heartache for me i spent like over three bill uh no around roughly around three bill of my four bill on cube sale on this 4.2 bill um yeah this thing was tough it was just not ranking up um Granted, it did hit a decent potential after it went up. Two-line attack, one-line dex is definitely nice. And I'll probably be keeping this for a while. Um, especially considering that, you know, when I get my arcane weapon, that's probably going to be a higher priority to cube over this or this, right? Um, so this was like my only woe during the cube sale, I feel, is tearing this up. It did have 6% attack and 30% IED before, which is... It's good for an emblem potential, but considering how high my IED was getting, it was going up to like 96 and 97, which considering the amount of attack that I had was definitely not good. I needed attack more than anything, so that's why I was so dead set on getting this up and recubing for attack. Just for reference, my attack last week was roughly 860. And this week, my attack is up to 1247. So just from the Absolab pieces and recubing my emblem and secondary, I gained about 50% attack, which made my range go up explosively. I also did gain some more stats, so it's not all because of the attack. But the point is that the attack was a huge contributing factor. So we're now 16k stat with 6 mil range. Let me equip my damage gear just to give you guys a full idea. There you go. So we're actually around almost 17k stat with 6.5 mil range. So basically my damage doubled just because of the increased attack along with the increased dex along with... A now completed somewhat, this is still here, link skill page. Granted, this is for farming. This is what my, my damage link skill page looks like. Wait, I might need to replace this. Hold up. Never mind. That's the best I can do. Um, Yeah, so we have a farming and damage link skill page, which is also really nice. 
can't say how happy I am about that. Um, which will probably be good enough going into 260 and maybe even beyond. And for my Legion, there it is. 2,000 and nice. <laughs> we did get our Hayato up quite a bit. I needed another character to level 190 so that I could get my two other Absolab pieces. And I decided to just do Hayato because my Hayato was level 100, which gave me the level 2 link skill, which gave me stat and attack for free. And it gave me more crit damage for passing the 140 mark. I'm probably going to continue doing hard Lotus and hard Damien or Lotus and Damien weeklies on this character to passively get it XP and so that when I start boss mules, I won't have trouble piecing their Absolab pieces together because I don't think it's going to be possible to get a boss mule to do 5% to hard Lotus and hard Damien this early into the game. So having an entryway into Abzo in a way that's a lot easier or I mean if I were to do hard Lotus and hard Damien then I can piece my set together a lot faster if I don't get boxes so that's why I'm personally getting this to level 190 and if it passively levels up all the way to 200 then I get another 2% critical damage which is so big for my entire account I have uh, Night Lord to 150. I use the Mega, Mega Burn, Mega Burn, Mega Burn from the Daily Gift to get it to level 150, which is nice. Mercedes, I'm pretty sure this was still 140 last week. Kana to 140, AB 125, Demon Avenger 121, Arc 121, Xenon 121, Evan still the same at 120 because I don't want to play it. Granted, I do plan to level up my Evan using the food storehouse. Ow. Food storehouse <laughs> event next week. And I also have eight extreme growth potions lined up to get this thing up as fast as possible. There is also growth potion selector coupons so that I might be able to get this thing straight to level 210, which is awesome for the level 3 link. So if I'm training my main or just training anything in general, I will be making infinitely more XP, which is really, really good. Happy about that. Everything is lining up so perfectly for this Evan to go straight to 210 almost instantly. Phantom, 120. Nothing's changed here. 2% Meso, Link Skill. Lara, 120. Ilium, 120. Kinesis, 120. And Wind Archer, 101. Depending on how my Evan goes on getting it to 200, I might use a food storehouse on the Wind Archer because I want to get this character to level 150. The reason why I want to get this character to level 150 is because it brings my Empress's Blessing to level 30, which gives me 10 attack. The Link skill goes up to level 2, which gives me another 2 attack. So that's 12 attack, and if it goes to 140, I also get another 20 decks from its legion. So just by getting this character to level 150, I get another 20 decks and another 12 attack, which is honestly quite a bit of stat for not a lot of work, right? Another thing that this does is it makes the block an S tier block, which gives me more Legion raid power. Which is honestly one of the things, surprisingly enough, that I'm actually struggling with a lot. My Legion raid power is not enough for me to generate a decent amount of coins to actually get my Legion up to the rank that it's supposed to be at. Nameless Legion rank 2 is what you achieve for hitting 1000 levels. And... I'm falling quite a bit behind. Falling actually a far bit behind. I need to level up twice. So for the next level, I need 140 Legion coins. And for the level after that, I need 160 Legion coins. So I need roughly 180 Legion coins, which is going to take me probably 5 to 6 days to actually get before I actually get the rank of 2k Legion, which will unlock my first bit of outer spaces, which I'm going to use to fill out crit damage and crit rate. 
The reason why I'm doing this is because crit damage is good for my entire account. Critting harder is just better. And filling crit rate is also good for my entire account. Once again, I'm a marksman. When I use Vicious Shot, my crit damage goes up for excess crit rate that I have. No, wait, no, for any crit rate that I have. I forgot, they changed... They changed Vicious Shot to give you crit damage just based off of your crit rate. So, I might be losing some dex and attack from that, but once again, if we get our... Wind Archer to 150, it'll balance out. It's not going to be too big of a deal. This is giving me 12 attack, which will be replaced if this thing gets 150. And I'm probably going to lose like 30 to 40 decks, but for an extra 3% critical damage and probably like an extra 6% crit rate, it is definitely worth. And yeah, that'll be it. Sarah's little wordy at the end and... Just giving you guys a little insight on how I'm thinking about going about things when it comes to progressing my account. Especially when it comes to like Legion and what stats I should choose. I feel like it's important to give insight on that and not just, I'm going to do this for no reason whatsoever. It makes it hard to follow along, so if it's a little wordy, I do apologize. But I feel like it's best this way. And yeah. Next week, the goals are going to be obviously 260 and getting at least our two most important six job skills unlocked, which is our origin skill, final aim, and sniping six, which will give us a lot of damage through split shot and the procs that it gives itself. On top of that, I don't really have goals. It may be hard lucid and hard will, maybe, depending on how strong we are. Especially considering that Shining Star Force is the next week. Um, but yeah, that'll be it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, and sub. Or I will literally eat your mesos faster than Star Forcing does. Also, if you guys want to see all of my progression live, please check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash 3 Much love. Peace out.